Hi, welcome to my workshop. In this four part series, we're going to be building an 8088 XT PC. The parts that we're going to be using are kits, so we need to build and assemble them. We have an IDE controller, we have an AdLib sound card, and finally, we have the 8088 computer card itself. This part will be covering the IDE controller, then there'll be a second part for the sound card, a third part for the 8088, and the last part will be putting it all together and doing some testing. So let's have a look at the kits that we need to build. This is the processor board. It's the Micro 8088 version 1.3 by Sergey Kislov. As the parts have been coming in, I've been organizing them on a spare PCB so that I can pick them out when I come to build it. And then the star of the show, which is the Faraday chipset, that is comprised of all the major parts from the original 8088. It has DMA controller, interrupt controller, clock controller, and a few others. I managed to find a 10 megahertz NEC V20. We then have an EEPROM for the ROM and two RAM chips. In the middle, we have the TTR Logic, which run at 15 nanoseconds. We then have a PIC, which needs programming for the PS2 interface. We then have a GAL, which is used to control options for memory addressing. If you look on the GitHub, which is linked on the screen and in the description, you'll find a link to the bill of materials. So it was really easy to order all of the passive components. You'll see that it has links to Mauser. One part that I couldn't get from the Mauser list was the capacitor trimmer. Didn't have the exact specs, so I found one that was close enough. I then picked out a few parts that I had in stock and also just ones that I ordered from one of my usual eBay suppliers. We need a passive backplane for these cars to sit in. There is one available along with the other kits, but I think the edge connectors are tricky to get. So I just found something on eBay that was cheap enough. It has the relevant power connectors and also an XT keyboard, but we'll be using the PS2 port on the Micro 8088. This is a Trident TVGA 9000i. It has the jumpers, which allow us to set this card specifically to the 8-bit ISA boss. I found an IDE controller kit on eBay for £30 that came with everything and it was just based on one of the open source designs. The last kit that I have is an AdLib compatible sound card, which again is based on widely available parts. Now we've seen all of the parts that we've got that go with the kits. Let's get on with building the first one, which will be the IDE controller. All of these kits are really easy to build. There are no surface mount components on there. You don't really need to know too much about what you're doing. Here we have the IDE controller that we are going to assemble. The kit only came with one socket for the firmware chip and I didn't have enough spare so I decided to just put the chips directly into the board itself. The assembly was really easy, there was nothing difficult about it. The firmware was already programmed onto the EEPROM. Okay, let's have a look. We have the instructions for this IDE kit. To make these boards safely, I have fans running in the background. I also have an extractor that goes through charcoal for the smoke. So that's one of the reasons why I'm overdubbing the build. So there'll be no, none of the background noise that you can hear. As we can see, it came in a nice anti-static bag. The ICs are also put onto some anti-static foam within the packaging. Let's just put those to one side for the moment. And the PCB is also in some pink bubble wrap, which is generally thought to be anti-static as well. But there are no more components in there that need the anti-static protection. So this is just to protect the board. The board looks to be of, of nice, decent quality. Looking at the list of components on the instructions, that's fairly straightforward. Just a couple of resistors and then capacitors. The diagram on the back of the instructions clearly marks out where everything should go. I'm going to start with the lowest components, which are the resistors. We have two 470 ohm and two 10K.
when you're soldering in the resistor packs, you'll notice that the packs have a dot on one side and the PCB has one end of the resistor pack silk screen, which is a square. So you match the dot to the square. I then chose to solder the socket, mainly because it was just the next lowest component. We now go to work our way across the top of the 7.4 based integrated circuit starting at U3 and U3 is a 7.4 LS573. Don't forget to wear anti-static protection when handling any integrated circuits. With all of these ICs I'm just going to solder the two opposing corners and then when all of the ICs are in we'll solder it all up together. U2 is another 573P. The next two chips are 74LS245s. Uh, so you can see there that U4 doesn't look particularly flat on the board but what I will do is just tweak that by adjusting those corners before we solder everything else up. U8 is a 74LS32. U5 is a 74LS04. U7 is a 74LS38. And the last two chips are 74LS68. That is all of the integrated circuits tacked in place so we want to do a visual inspection make sure all the chips are facing the notches on the board to indicate the direction that they should be soldered in next we have these decoupling capacitors and the caps that were provided in the kit weren't the correct size for the board. The legs need to be spread wider apart for them to fit in properly. So I spent a, a little bit of time just fiddling until I found the best way to put them into the boards. But once I found the best way to do that, then we just carry on putting all of the caps in. And I just use some foam, place it over the top to hold the caps in place while I flip the board over and then we can solder them. Now we have two dip switches, which were a little bit tricky to get in. And again, I needed to just finesse the legs so that they would go in the sockets properly. Next, we have just some normal jumpers. I just cut them down to the size that's needed, put them in the holes, and then again, use the foam to hold them in place while I flip the board over. And as you can see, I missed out one of the caps. So I put that in when I noticed it. D1 is an activity LED. Check the orientation of the LED using the flat side of the silk screen. Now we're going to solder in 
the IDC connector for the ribbon cable. Just treat this like the ICs, tack one of the corners until you get it in the right place. And then we have an electrolytic capacitor at the bottom corner. Now that everything is in the board, we do one more final inspection, make sure that everything is in the right direction and that everything is in the correct place before we do the last solder up. So now let's just sit back and watch the soldering in action. And there we are, that is all the legs soldered. Make sure to check for any missing solder joints and also any bad solder joints or shorts. Now we're going to clean up all the flux from the solder. I use a solution of ultrasonic PCB cleaner and deionized water first use that to clean up all the flux and then we'll clean that up afterwards with some IPA. Then we just evaporate the alcohol that's left using my air compressor. The last part is to put on the jumpers on the headers following the instructions. So we want J2 and J3 set to positions 2 and 3 to enable high speed mode. Then we put a jumper on J1 to enable 5 volt going to pin 20. Now we need to set the dip switches to match what was printed on the instructions. They're actually the wrong way and you need to follow the picture, not the instructions. Set the dip switches to match what's on the picture on the other side of the instruction sheet. The last step is to just insert the BIOS chip. Make sure that you put the chip in the right direction as indicated by the notch on the socket. And there we have our completed XT to IDE ISA card. I've got a compact flash adapter and a cable so that we can connect this up. In the next part of the series, I will be building the Adlib sound card that also has some interesting issues during the build, mainly because the white PCB was just so horrible to solder up. So hope that you'll join me in the second part of this series of building an 8088 XT kit based PC.